Mercedes GL450 rear shocks that's what we're going to be doing today rear shocks right where the rear tire is you'll see that there's a hard plastic rubbery kind of thing where car. you can jack up the jack car it up jack it up inches. one or two inches that's it we want to have the nuts we want to have the nuts stay on the inside of the car grab you a prying device two if you need it come right here to the back towards the wall come right into here pull down as hard as you can it'll pop up right here and then go to this side pull up as hard as you can it'll pop that open it's recommended if you're doing both sides to just get those both ready so that way your tool can be put away now let's go into the second row now it's probably a good idea to just crawl over the back seat well you can open the door but now that you pop that open you'll notice these little lock tabs stop about right there and so if you measure that it's going to be from here to there so I want to go from here to there about where the cup is and we want to twist there you go and there it is there then right here at the end we want to pop that up like that now also don't forget this this corner you want to do the same thing on the other side just like that now right about here go try to go all the way through to the back side you'll feel a little a little bounce right there that's it now you've taken that off do that on both sides and this will explain to you what these are they're just little locks they just lock up in there it's not a big deal but you have not damaged any of the material it's just brand new look at that it looks beautiful so you can set these in the first row and uh, we know that that's going to be the driver's side see now just go ahead and work on the passenger side and so there's the passenger side you'll see that right here is the little locks that you pull them out of and they're pretty tight so that's why you want to bring a screwdriver here and here because as you're lifting up they'll actually come straight out and there's a little lip right here that faces in a downward angle just slightly so it makes it difficult so if you have something even longer or bigger, set it here and just grow like that, pry back like that, real lightly, real lightly. If you get if you get too into it, well then yeah, you've overdone it. So now you'll see that this insulation's here. Yeah, no big deal. You can kind of just move it out of the way, and you'll see a wire harness under here. See where they made this preparation. They made it preparated right here for your first time. If you're a virgin at this, kind of just open that up all the way across. You get you a razor knife, open that up, and then you'll see that the top of the strut tower, the shock tower, is right there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next is uh, get my knife. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see. Now, if you go back over the seat, being careful, you don't want to scratch anything. Remember, this is Mercedes. So you come back here, you have a regular slot screwdriver. See, I've been working on that one. Just twist these. There's the lock position there. Here's the unlock position. You can pull this box out, and you can actually get more view through this way to see where you got to go now you see there's a there's some housing in there there's some other things in there but we want to get right up in there and then you'll see that there's this piece of plastic right here as well see it right here 
So I'm working our way through there. I've already cut this back and cut that back for access. It's not going to hurt anything. Just work at a good pace. And as you can see, we didn't have to remove this thing right here. Okay, so what we're trying to gain access of is the shock. And the shock is going to be right in here. You'll see uh, some wires running back. And you've got some uh, clips that actually go on the top of the of the studs and then there's nuts underneath there so you want to pry those up those little things right there there's a couple of them see and you're going to gain more access to this okay so i'm going to start over here as you see i have my handy dandy flathead screwdriver i went underneath that little harness clip and i pried down which you lift that up and i did it at the same time with my other handy tan dandy little tool right over here and as you push down this pops up see so you can get that up and out of the way now you need to have some movement with this cable for the back over there this one over here is your air strut it's your air spring strut on this side but over here we're almost there you got to undo these two we just want to move this cable around freely see you get this to move around and it's going to be very helpful because you can position yourself anywhere you want to as soon as you move that around. So we're moving that around. We're going to open this up. Look down there. There's another one. You see it right down there? There you go. We're going to go over here to this one. I like to just go under the insulation. See? Let's go under the insulation and twist. And there you go it pops right on up see you're gaining access so you can move these out of the way just move them out of the way you're gonna have to move some of this see it's really good insulation so we're getting we're getting there there's two out of the way and it's not gonna hurt to try to remember where these are plugged in at since this comes off of this one it's the very first one now it's up to you but I'm gonna go ahead and um, this will move with the cable so not a big deal and here's one right down here a blue one as soon as we pop that other one as soon as we pop that other one up all that should just move out of the way oh, here we go there we go see how easy that was it's almost like doing a Mr. Rogers showcase here so there we go see that one's out of the way so this whole cable can, is flexible. It moves around a lot easier. Now, I really don't like this white stuff. It's hard to see. So I'm gonna reach under here and go all the way back and push down on it and it should just tear. There we go. There we go. Just fold it over, get it out of the way. Just fold it back, push on it. And there we go. Great insulation though. Mercedes did a good job with that. See, there's another one in the back. We're gonna get back there. Pop that one out. Oy. And this one in the back, you can reach through that access panel back there in the back. It'll be a lot easier going that way. So here I am in the back. Now this one here, you can just take your two fingers back here, put them under here, and just pop that out follow it up there's another one just pop that all right they're all moving out of the way let's see if we can gain access let's see now we're getting there aren't we yeah we're getting there look at that next step out of the way now, i noticed this one's holding this in so give it a really good pop there now the whole thing's moving out of the way now you're getting like full access all right hey we're doing good so far so good now you may ask yourself well I can't find them well I just thought I'd show you where they're at so push this back and there it is right back there they're kind of tight so a left-hand person would really like this side and a right-hand person would like the other side. You know what I'm 
I'm saying? So uh, there they are. There's a little hump in the middle. But uh, you want to grab a 13 millimeter. I'm using a half inch, so it fits snug enough on there. I've almost got that first one out of there. So just reach right underneath there, and there's that flat spot. That's where they're at. They're hidden underneath this. Don't cut this. A lot of people just rip it out, get it out of the way. Well, you're getting a lot of vibration noise back here in your Mercedes. You don't want that? Hell no. Okay, well, there's nut number one. I went ahead and screwed it on here. It actually, it's this side right here. So I just make sure that the threads match. That's it. For this one over here, it's a lot easier access for you to get a six inch or maybe two six inch extensions, three eighths. And you wanna definitely have a deep socket. And if you look right here, let me get a good angle. Oh yeah. Right where that black piece is, you see that black piece? Uh, about an inch and a half from there, straight down is the other one. So you can go straight down and you just pull back on that insulation as you unscrew it. It's kind of tight, but that's the whole reason we did the cable. You kind of pop that cable off. You need to get some room in there. You don't want to break any wiring. And I didn't have to disconnect that wire, see? It's just coming with it, so. We're doing really good and in case you wondered because in the beginning i was telling you that you don't want to jack the car up all the way and the reason is if you jack up the vehicle you're putting stress on the nuts on the top so you don't want to put stress on them you want them to relax um, so i wanted to tell you that they're easier to take out and then when you lift the vehicle the two studs that are mounted on that on that um shock will actually drop out of the hole for you as soon as you take that bolt out from underneath we'll get to that easy peasy mercedes okay you may lift the vehicle now remember by that rubber plastic piece right there and uh as soon as you get it high enough you'll notice your tires barely touching the ground that's all you really need you don't need to go any higher or you don't, you don't want to go any less. So then grab you something to lay on. If you want to know what the sizes are, I have a 24 millimeter socket and a half inch ratchet. Over here I have a 15 16 and this is for the, for the bolt that goes through. And I'm gonna just support it right against the wheel. So if I unscrew it on the other side, this will stick here and it'll hold it for me while I undo it. Now I also have this, this bar, it's solid steel, it's pretty long, and I just want to break it free. I have a gun I could use, but you can see my 24, my 24 deep socket is, oh, that's terrible, that's terrible, it won't fit. So we're definitely going to have to do something about that. I'm going to go look for a 24 short. We're going to need a 24 short. And so here it is here. Here's the shock. As you can see right up here, it's loose. See, it kind of fell out of the hole, so it's ready to just drop. But we need to undo that first. So that's where we're going. Okay, so if you run across this situation, and this is too long and you don't have a short one, the thing you can do is you put your wrench on the other side, face it where you can move it around. And since you want to go down with it, put it up as high as you can in the back here, right there. Make sure it's on there. Take your other wrench and you boot them up. Now as you can see, it goes this way. You just tilt it up come underneath that lip now all you have to do is push down back here just like that see that you get a lot of torque on there so just push it as hard as you can and break it free now if you see a lot of rust or dirt I didn't suggest cleaning that up before you really do anything see it so this one's not too bad I've seen them worse uh, so if all in all comes to all, 
whatever you want to do you can also stick a pole or rod right through here and push down which will actually turn this but this is the way to do this it gives you an extension it gives you more torque you can break that nut free as soon as it's broke free I have a feeling it'll come off pretty easily so but you're gonna have to tighten it this way too as soon as you mount the top in so when you get the top mounted in that's when you drop this down and you mount this bolt in you can't do it this way you could you could put it in here line it up lower the vehicle have somebody help guide it into the hole you know you could do it that way we'll figure it out let me break that free so here's what I ended up doing and that nut is extremely tough so I got the wrench on there and then I put my big torque pole right over the head of the wrench against the lower control arm see over here on the other side see it over there then you just pull down really hard right here and that popped it free so I got it free right now but it's still tight so I'm gonna have to do this several times before it's loose enough to actually take off but uh, there's one method right there if you're having problems hopefully you just buy a 1516 or a 24 millimeter metric short socket and make sure it's uh, a medium to short okay when you look at that I actually found a 24 socket short now I gotta tell you something because that stud comes out a little bit long it doesn't fit on there all the way but it does go most of the way and then the end piece is not going to fit on all the way. So, no problem. Just don't lock it into place. It does fit though. Look at that. Just put that in there. See, when you do that, it pushes it away from the socket, see? So you actually don't want to push the button on this because it pulls this out. But uh, just get it set up and you can use your bar. You get plenty of torque on that to get that started. You can't even get a gun to fit in here. That's 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 the shit right there. Uh, they probably thought about it, but I would have put the bolt the other way and put the nut on this side. Agreed? Now Mercedes knows what they're doing, so there must be a reason. Unless they just thought it was easier to put the bolt in here and put the nut on the other side and tighten it on this side. I don't like messing with this side. It sticks to this rubber. I mean, it'll freeze in there after time. So here I'm gonna try to break that free with that long bar and I'll bet you I can get it that way. Here we go. Okay, I'm having nothing but trouble with this nut. This really is a pain in the butt. So what I did was I took a jack stand and put it on the frame piece right here in the back. See, it's the only one that's actually gonna hold it up there, right between the exhaust and this piece here. So it's close. I'm gonna go lower the jack bring the jack over here and I know I told you about not turning it right here but I'm gonna have to turn the bolt right here and put the wrench as close as I can here so when it goes that way it'll stay and break that free there's so much rust on here it's not moving and I put a lot of might on it so what I'm gonna do is put my jack right here and I'm gonna jack up my ratchet that'll break that free and that's what we're doing now Click, click. Okay, so this is ingenuity at its finest. We're gonna put that right about where the ratchet's gonna be at. There we go. Maybe right over there. There's where we're gonna jack it up. Yeah, something's working. Oh. Oh. Damn. A lot of pressure. I think I broke it free. I'm going to go back down. You can hear the ratchet clicking. Well, all the way back down, we're going to do it again. You know why? Because we're not quitters. That's why. Tighten the jack up. Go again. Let 
Well, at least we know it's not going to be stuck in the rubber. There we go. Let it down. Well, I'll tell you, you almost need a jack to do that. Ladies or fellas or whoever's working on their Mercedes. Listen to that guy. Ingenuity. You can put it together, I can take it apart. I'll figure it out and make it better. That should be everybody's motto. If you can make it, we can fix it. If it breaks, we're on it. All right, here we go. Give it another one. As soon as I don't feel a whole lot of pressure, I can probably finish it off by hand. It's going a lot easier at this point. There it goes. That was a lot easier. Okay, I'm done with that. I should be able to take the, the rear of it out. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's loose now. Well, that's it, fellas. Now put your jack back where it was, because this stands not total security. Okay, so now we're gonna switch sides. I'm gonna put this back over here. Since we're going this way, we're gonna make sure that uh, or we'll be going down, so we're gonna hang that. There you go. Just hang that down. Now we can use the short socket on the back side. And that should be a lot easier now. Oh yeah. There it goes. Boy, it was tight. All right, I'm going to work on taking this off. That worked. So if you need a shortcut tip, there it is. Then we'll set the new one in there. Mount it on the top and get the two nuts started. Not tight, just started. That way we can reach this. We'll use the jack to bring the body up and down to line this up if we have to. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, well, actually, I'm probably not done. We'll put the new one in. What do you know? The bolt came out. Tons of rust on the end. No wonder it wasn't moving. Look at that rust in there. So uh, when I put this back together, I'm putting some grease up there so water won't hit that end. Um, anyhow, it popped right on out. It's, uh, I got lucky. So right here at this point, what I'm going to do is lift this up over this bar and then it should come out right here where this cable is right around this cable let's see there we go there we go hey look at that now don't know i don't know you don't know either of us know which way that mounts up there but obviously there's a plate on that see that's kind of smart so there's how you get it out and that'll be the same way you direct it back in there okay yep that's it look at that something else to work with around here there's that plate so apparently the new ones that i have already have the nuts on them that's excellent good and the plate kind of just free sat up there all right so i guess when you compress it, it pushes down on that plate that's excellent. So I know you're, you're one person. You're trying to put the top of the strut back in the hole. There it is right there. Then you got to go up on top and start the nuts. Yeah, no problem. But well, how do you hold that up there? You know, if it's just one person. Okay, well, I come up with this idea. What do you think? I went right over the top of the axle with the wrench, across the middle of the part, right over here to this bolt, and that's supporting it, it's holding it in place. Now, here's the two new nuts. Do not drop them when you're reaching back there. And before you reach in your Mercedes, Go ahead and wash those hands up because that old one was nasty. I'll be back. Boom! Oh, much better. My goodness, I left a little piece on there. It's just a reminder, don't touch. Okay, so cleanliness is godliness. I know you've heard that before. We're gonna go back in there and get these nuts on there. Hell yeah! 
so you just want to go about five or six times to get those nuts started you kind of want those studs that are there to be able to lower or raise and that way you can get the bolt line back up underneath the truck vehicle whatever you want to call it so there I go back underneath now I got that in place well, it's only about a hundred degrees outside right now now that I got that in place go ahead and remove this ah. and as you can see this has to go down quite a way now don't worry about it if it looks like it's the wrong position or whatever it will twist so you just twist it where you want it now you can see I've got to go down oh well, let's say wow that's quite a ways huh quite a ways down well no reason to freak out as soon as you lower that jack over there oh, by the way remove remove your stand get that stand out of the way you're not gonna need that complicating what you're doing now you could in fact I'm gonna recommend this you could take your stand and put your stand right underneath this lower control arm why well whenever you lower this it's gonna push the arm up See, push the arm up lower the car down it'll work together so you now it's gonna be complicated reaching over there and putting the jack down looking down here and all that so I just have to pretty much go about six inches and then come look see if I'm close enough so we'll just do that first well it worked a little bit but it didn't go all the way down now I'm beginning to wonder why but then I thought well I didn't relieve any air pressure back there that's probably holding a lot of air pressure right there so I got this little switch right here that pretty much tells you when to add air now on this car battery by the way it's dead. So, this did not fit. It still has about three more inches to go. And there is a little switch right here that shows where the lower control arm is, which probably regulates how much air is inside there. But the battery's not working in this vehicle, so I doubt anything's going to happen. See how I did that? Kind of just push that over. It's uh, not doing too well. I'll put it back the way it was. Like that. It's just a piece of rubber. So, we need to let some air out. Well, if you look, I'm going to get right up there. On the top of there, you can see that air line going over to it. Uh, it looks like a 10 millimeter nut almost bet if we just loosen that nut up it'll let the air out therefore lowering that air suspension and allowing this to go all the way down so if you run across this this is probably the best way to do it I'll go look up inside that uh, armrest on the third row and see if it's easier to release air there but I doubt it I think this would be the right place to do it and it's not that hard it's easy to get your hand up there okay and there's just a it's either an 8 or a 10 it's real small so I'm guessing a 10 go up there and uh, see if I could release some of that air I'll be right back with a 10 and you could actually hear it now and it's lowering the suspension so I just lightly loosened up the nut now we'll watch this and see if this comes down so I don't have a jack on here the only thing I have is the stand but it's pushing the arm up so by theory this should work this should bring this down far enough I mean 
something is working here. You can hear that hissing. Very, very slow. You don't want to go too fast. Maybe I'll just come back. Oh, I can hear the suspension dropping. Let's see. Yeah, it's getting closer. We don't want to miss our shot. So get your bolt ready. There's the arm. Very, very slow, see? It is working. I'm only about two inches away from it now. It is a 10 millimeter. It's not an eight. Look at that. It's coming. Very, very slow. So just keep at it. Let the air out. Go. It's a very, very slow procedure. It might take a minute, so I'm going to stop the video until it's slow. Very slow procedure. So you want to get your bolt ready. There it goes. See? Get the bolt in there. As soon as you get the bolt in there, you're good to go. Now you can stop the air at any time. Just tighten that back. Now I got the nut on and I got the bolt through and I tightened up the little air nut up there. We're pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this, take this out, set this down on the ground. Um, I'll just leave it where I could lift the jack to lift the vehicle. Come back down here and I'll tighten this after I tighten the top nuts. So when I push the wheel down on the ground, it's gonna push that shock up just enough. Like I said, you don't wanna over tighten anything up there. And you don't want to loosen it too much so it's, it's got to be very specific so that's a perfect way to do it and we'll go up on top and we'll tighten those nuts in um, hopefully you let enough air out the more air you let out the stronger this uh, shock is going to to be uh, mounted in here but I just did enough where I know it's holding up above and it reached down here below and that's about perfect well, do the same thing for the other side, folks. What I recommend was, this time I recommend taking that bolt out first. Don't take it completely out. Just loosen the nut and get the nut where it can spin off. And then do the same procedure on the other side. I appreciate you joining the mobile car doctor. Have a good day. Now, just go ahead and put everything back on this side. So it looks like you haven't even touched it, see? Now this is the driver's side, by the way. This is the back of the car. Now on the passenger side, you'll have to remove this seat. As you can see a lot of stuff will fall underneath it. And I'm gonna show you real quick how to remove that seat. Come into this door on this side. And you'll find two little clips right here. They're plastic. What you do is Pull up on the bottom right here, pull up and slide down. Over here, you have another one over here. Slide down and pull the plastic off, set it to the side. And then you will find that um, to take this seat out, that there are two bolts on its frame. And then when you get here to this, to the plugs, they're pretty self-explanatory. You just push here on this side, see? And that one there will open that up. And that one opens that one up. So that'll be easy. And then after you take that bolt out right here on the very side, straight back. You don't see it now because I pulled this panel back this way. But there's two bolts that go on this side that mount. They're hidden in between the panel and the seat. So look right back there. Now, if you don't have a special tool for these bolts, let me show you what one looks like. 
here's what it looks like. If you don't have the special tool for here, what I used was an extension 11 millimeter. Look at that, it didn't damage them, it took them all out, and I used an impact gun, it was really quick. So I used an 11 millimeter for that. Then, there's also a, a piece that's on the front of the chair that you pop back. After you do that, and that's disconnected, I just went out the back. I dropped it upside down, carried it around, and here's those two bolt holes I was talking about that go right there, see? Carried it around and uh, put it in the front seat for now. And there it is. It's all folded up in the front seat. Just sitting there. So, eh. this piece right here, this panel that goes against this wall, as you can see, it just pops out right here. But there are a couple of bolts in here, in the front, right where the tie downs are. Right here is one. There's one over there. And then it pretty much unsnaps. You don't have to move this seat if you don't want to, unless you want more room, but I didn't need it to just do the uh, shocks. Now I'm going to end up doing the uh, air strut, the air shock on this side, so I pulled the panel back. Now I didn't even try to do the shock through that hole. I just uh, cut it out and I went, ah, oh, wait a minute, I have to, that one's bad too. So here I am with the insulation, I'll be able to use an extension now and go straight down into those two and take the top of the shock mount off so it's not really too bad when you come back here you'll find that this wire is tied and secured right here by a wire tie a little locking wire tie just undo that pull that back and give you room that way you can move this see this is movable just move it back as far as you can and what i found to give you more room was get a two by four and just take this piece right here and just push back and put the two by four right there that gives you a lot of room and opens this up for you so you could reach down okay so it's a little more complicated and right here in the back you've got a little plastic piece that goes across well it's got screws on it see they're just little little screws just take the two out here the two out there and then you have to pop it up so it'll pop up and then there's another piece that goes across here it pops up it sits here in these little lock grooves right there we'll pop that up and this piece right here take this off first there's one or two bolts that go right here inside so you have to lift this up then get those first okay then this little trim piece you can pop that open just like I did see just pop it open it's got these little locking mechanisms on it no pro no problem now your wire will only stretch this far if you don't want to unplug anything don't I'm not gonna unplug anything I've got plenty of room right there to reach straight down with with super long extensions all right well I hope you enjoyed the video good luck I hope you're able to fix yours thanks for joining the mobile car doctor subscribe if you haven't already it helps me out bye bye